After purchasing the 2017 Giant Trance Advanced One about seven months ago, I finally got a chance to make a trip to the mountains. So after a few days of riding in the mountains of North Carolina, I'm finally ready to do my long-term update review on this bike. I'll start off by going over the modifications that I've made to the bike. First of all, I did change the grips. Nothing wrong with the stock grips. They're actually pretty comfortable. I prefer the foam grips uh, just because I've used them for so many years on my other bikes. I also changed out the saddle. I had the same saddle on my previous trance and on a trip I had some problems with, with some saddle sores. It turns out actually I found out recently it was the shorts I was using. I was using a pair of baggy shorts that were kind of grippy and the way they would grip the seat it just caused some issues with chafing. So actually the stock saddle is pretty good and I even have it on the XTC Plus that I have and I have not had any issues. Also I did change the stock tires to some bigger ones. I stuck with the same tread pattern, the Schwabi Nobby Nicks, and I'm not going to go too much into that since I have some separate videos as part of my Project 275 Plus talking about this tire change. But I did this kind of as an experiment but I am going to keep these tires because it really improves the grip and I say really improves, it's not dramatic. The, the, the stock tires were a 2.35 in the front and a 2.2 in the back. So they were good tires. I really like the fact that Giant allows this bike to have the capability of running the 2.6 tires. The rims are 27 millimeters wide and you've also got plenty of clearance to put on 2.6 tires. And it's kind of hard to see in the video and especially since I have this kind of bulky chain stay protector on it, but they do give some really good uh, clearance for a bigger tire and you can see in the front you've got a lot of clearance. 2.6 tires are probably as big as I would go on a full suspension trail bike. I actually had a conversation with a guy in a local shop in Brevard, North Carolina and he said that's as big as they run too because when you get bigger than 2.6 you have some issues with sidewall durability. If you don't want to buy two tires, what I would recommend is getting a 2.6 for the front, taking the 235 that comes on the front and putting that on the back. You're going to get a lot of good traction with that bigger front tire and still have uh, decent grip in the back, really good grip I should say, and also have a tire that's pretty nimble in the back, which is a good combination. Those are the modifications that I've made to the bike. Now I want to get the negatives out of the way before I start to go into the positives. And fortunately I can say that the positives do far outweigh the negatives and these are minor but I want to mention them on the video. First of all the seat post. This seat post has actually been working flawlessly until I got up to the mountains. I have an issue. First I thought there was an issue with the pressure inside the seat post but it's actually just the cable hanging up a little bit. I will say that the, the lever and the actual smoothness of the seat post is better on the XTC Plus that I have and that is not a giant brand so that's a Trans X I think it's called I'm not really that familiar with the brand uh, but I really haven't had too many issues with giant seat posts this is the first one where it's just not operating quite as smooth as I'd like it to uh, but what what will happen is uh, if I sit on the saddle too early I have to basically you know, do the lever and then wait about a, two seconds before I sit. And if I if I don't wait, I'll drop the saddle down a little bit and, or drop the seat post down. So uh, I'm going to change out the cable when I get home. I think that's going to remedy the situation. Another issue that I've had is some friction in the shifting. And I have not had good success with Jaguar cables, which is what comes on this bike. And that actually may be the problem I ha I'm having with the seat post as well. Just too much friction in the cable housing. So I will probably swap out the housing, the uh, shifter housing, and probably even the housing for the seat post because it's just more friction. Like the XTC Plus that I have is so much smoother in the shifting. I deal with it. It's just a little more, bit more effort. I don't have a problem with it hanging up so when I'm loosening the cable to go into a bigger gear, harder to pedal, it still drops down fine. It's just to shift to a bigger cog or a lower gear. I have to use quite a bit more effort than I normally would have to. And the last negative that I'll mention is the fact that the bottom bracket is pretty low 
on this bike. It's not a huge negative and it's a trade-off. As with anything in cycling, there's trade-offs. So bigger tires are going to give you more grip, but they're heavier on the climbs. Slacker geometry is going to give you more stability on descents, but may be a little sluggish on flatter trails. So Giant has lowered the bottom bracket on this bike and also made the top tube, the effective top tube, longer, uh, which has really helped the handling of the bike. So with the bottom bracket being lower, the positive thing is this thing on the descents is so stable and it's also uh, a bike that's pretty easy to get around corners. Uh, but you do have pedal strikes. Uh, it, it, it has not been too bad, but I've had a few. And so I would recommend if you get one of these to put these little crank boots on to protect your crank sets because you will bang these into rocks. I was even trying to get up uh, a rock ledge going up a hill that was, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 inches high. And I just hit the chain ring on it. Uh, because the bottom, bottom bracket was so low. So even when you're cornering on flatter trails, if you're pedaling into the corners or out of the corners, um, there is a chance you're going to have some pedal strikes. And you can even see it here on the pedals where I hit a rock. Uh, so again, you know, it's a negative in the fact that you're going to have more pedal strikes. It's a positive in the sense that the bike's going to handle better. So take it for what it's worth. Since I'm mentioning geometry, this does have a 67 degree head angle. And it has 17.1 inch chain stays. Those are the two numbers that I really look at when kind of on paper seeing how a bike's going to ride. And I absolutely love the geometry of this bike. It does not wander around too much on the climb. So it does have 150 millimeters of travel in the front, 140 in the back. And it used to be a few years ago, trail bikes like this would have a talus fork or some kind of travel adjust fork. So you could lower the front end on the climb and then raise it back up on the descents, which I really liked. I mean, it does help a bike handle better on the climbs, but I really haven't had too much of an issue with this bike wandering around. It does wander around more than a cross country bike, obviously, but it, it's not been an issue. I've been climbing some, I mean, just super steep climbs, uh, some super, uh, like a slick rock climbs that are just a wall. And um, I, you know, the front end has been controllable and coming back down, uh, this bike is incredibly stable, incredibly fun. Uh, it's a really good amount of travel so that you're not just mushing around on the climbs uh, and you're able to have uh, some really just plush suspension on the descents. Descending on this bike has, like I said, it's been a blast and I will full, fully open up the shock. And it just gives it such a plush, smooth feel. This is it really is one of the smoothest suspensions that I've used and I, and I knew it would be nice on the descents uh, but when I got up here to the mountains it was just I mean it's it's great I put the shock in the middle for climbing and that really there's a pretty big difference in fully open and then to the middle setting and I use this probably for most of my climbing very rarely will I lock it out uh, where we're staying uh, it, the house is on top of a mountain on a paved road and it's very nice to lock out the rear shock on the pavement and lock out the front shock. But for most of my climbing, I'll leave it in the middle setting so the tire will kind of conform over bumps and give me better traction when I'm climbing. And what's nice about Maestro is sometimes if I want to just kind of leave it over into the fully open position, I still have a decent pedaling platform and when I really want a strong pedaling platform, I just put it in the middle. So the combination with the valving and the shock and the Maestro suspension gives this bike a very, very firm pedaling platform. And that's one of the strong benefits of Maestro is the fact that it does give you a very strong pedaling platform, but it's also very smooth on the descent. Since I talked about climbing, I do want to mention the gearing on this bike for me has been spot on. I haven't used the big 46 in the back until I got up here in the mountains and I used every bit of it on some of the climbs. So it's a 32 in the front and 1136 or 1146 in the back. And it has, uh, I, you know, I haven't needed a, a smaller gear um, in the climb. I mean, we're talking three mile an hour climbs. Uh, so I, I don't think you're gonna be longing for a smaller gear. So the 1146 is fine. This bike, as it sits right now, is about 27 and a half pounds. That's with the 2.6s. 
And by the way, if you haven't watched my other videos on these 2.6 tires, I added a little over a quarter pound. And of course, that's with the XT pedals, a water bottle cage. So it's this is a light trail bike. It really helps on the climb. So uh, this bike is a very enjoyable bike to ride on longer rides. The, the guys I've been riding with, every single one of them uh, are on cross-country bikes. Actually, one of them is a camber, so it's a... It's a, kind of a mix between trail and cross country, uh, but definitely less travel and I've had no problems keeping up with these guys. And, and I do want to mention since, since I said that, uh, all, the, all the other guys I'm riding with are on specialized bikes uh, with a brain shock. And anytime they wanted to fully lock out the rear end, they had to get off the bike, uh, turn some knobs and get back on. What's nice about this bike is if you want to lock it out, you just reach down and move it over there. So. Uh, it, you know, to, what, what I typically do is I'll, you know, leave the suspension there, I'll leave it right there on the fork, and then when it's time to head downhill, I pop those open, I drop the saddle, especially if it's going to be a technical descent, and I'm ready to descend, and it, you know, takes all of about two seconds to do all that. So you can take this bike from a really solid, steady climber to an awesome descender pretty quickly. I like the riding position of this bike, especially on longer rides. It's low enough on the front end to where you can still be aggressive, uh, but you're not having uh, you know, neck or back problems after a long ride. Of course, that's subjective, so you know, other people may, may have uh, different results, but it's got a 60 millimeter stem, and the top tube, like I said, is a little bit longer this year, and it puts you in a really nice position for climbing and descending. I am happy to report that I've had no issues with anything making noises or creaking on this bike. I can't stand when bikes creak. And you know, whether it's the pivots or the bottom bracket, it's one of the most annoying things, especially when you can't figure out what it is. Fortunately for this bike, it's been totally silent. Uh, my giant XTC Plus has had, has had some creaking in the seat post. Uh, this bike has not had that issue. Uh, so again, everything's been silent. I've really had no mechanical issues that I can think of other than you know, a flat tire or two and the seat post uh, hanging up a little bit. But, but mechanically, uh, no issues with the brakes, no issues with the suspension. So it's been a, a pretty maintenance-free bike. When I was going over the negatives of the bike, I actually did forget to mention probably my biggest gripe of this bike and that is how difficult it is to unseat the bead of the tires from the rims when you're changing a tube or taking off the tires. So I converted these to tubeless which was a pain to do because of just getting the tire unseated from the rim. Now interestingly when I changed the tires to the 2.6's recently the rear unseated fine. I had no issues with it at all but the front was a pain to get off. So if you're out on a ride and you're running tubes and you get a flat and you have to change out a tube it's it's going to be pretty hard to get these tires unseated. Uh, the, the most difficult tires I've ever worked with and I've worked with a lot of rims and a lot of tires so it's something that I hope Giant will remedy in the future. Now the good news is once the tires are on uh, the bead is really secure so you don't have a concern that it's going to come off when you're riding uh, and you're not going to burp a sidewall when they're tubeless but that is a, a, again an issue that I hope Giant will rectify in the future. So there is my review of the 2017 Giant Trans Advance 1. Is this a bike that I would recommend absolutely uh, again it's probably the best trail bike that i've ridden despite the few negatives that i mentioned uh, the fact that it does come with carbon rims and that's that's one thing that's positive too about the rims you, you know it, even though you have trouble unseating the beads it's a stiff carbon rim uh, the, the carbon frame the uh, shimano xt components and, you know i'm not going to go too heavily into all that because i did that in my in my other review of this bike soon after I, soon after I got it uh, but it is a bike that I would recommend uh, it climbs extremely well uh, it tracks well in the corners because of the carbon frame and carbon wheels uh, and it descends probably as good as any trail bike that I've ever descended on and so it's it's a bike that is very versatile uh, if you did some real non-competitive cross-country racing you could race this bike I mean 27 pounds out of the box is 
light. Uh, so it's just a, a, an extremely versatile bike. Uh, it's one that is, I think is going to be pretty future-proof. Again, I'm not going to go over to all, all the uh, different features on it, but the fact that it comes with boost spacing, front and rear, uh, through axles, uh, it, it makes it a pretty future-proof bike. Um, with just a few modifications uh, that you want to make to personalize it for yourself, I think you're going to have a bike that will last you for many years. So that's going to wrap up this review of this bike. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks for watching.